Hi everybody, it's Miss Marie, and today we are having a special story time like we did last year. Um, in between our regular fall story times and our winter story times, we like to try to fill it up with some special story times. This one is a stuff your own pet story time. Last year we did a stuff your own sloth and we read sloth stories and learned facts about sloths. This year we are going to do a different one um, and we are going to stuff our own pet dachshund. A dachshund is a kind of a dog. It's actually a very popular dog in America. I think maybe 12th most popular dog in America. They are very small, short dogs um, with long bodies. Sometimes they're called the wiener dog. And their short little legs keep them close to the ground so they're good for um, hunting animals like rabbits or uh, badgers, which actually dachshund means a badger hound. Um, and so those are why they are so close to the ground, why they have their long body, because the animals that they would go after would be living in holes. Um, and they're actually very brave and fierce little dogs, um, if they have to be, but most of the time they're very sweet, gentle little dogs to their people. Um, they're quite brave. And so that's why the first story we're going to read today is called Dex, The Heart of a Hero. It's one of my favorite superhero books about a dog named Dex. It's by Carolyn Boner and illustrated by Mark Berner. And um, it's an older one. It's published by HarperCollins. And here on the end paper I wanted to show you here is Dex and he's reading a comic book about the planet protector. He likes to read comics about superheroes. And he likes to watch movies about superheroes. There he is at the movie theater, I'm looking up at the poster. You see he's very short with his little short legs. But let's see, does, does Dex have the heart of a hero? There he is looking in the mirror at himself. He's very tall, <laughs> long, very long, I should say. His legs are very short. Here we go. Dex was a little dog. His legs were little. His tail was little. His body was little. He looked like a plump sausage sitting on four little meatballs. Being the size that he was, Dex was often overlooked. The other dogs grew tired of waiting for Dex to catch up when they played out when they played chase and after a while they forgot to invite him at all. No one really seemed to notice him except when Clevis, the tomcat, demonstrated how he could stand right over Dex and not even ruffle his fur. Oh dear, I'm making fun of poor little Dex. Clevis, the tomcat, is especially mean showing how tall he is compared to the dog. Yet everything, yes, everything about Dex was little except for his dreams. He wanted to be a hero. He could just see it. And here he's imagining himself as a comic book hero. The mighty Dex flew up into the dark and starry night. But wanting and being are two different things. Dex lived on dreams until one day after crawling out from under Clevis yet again, he decided there had to be more to life than gazing at the underside of a cat. There had to be more to him. If he could be a hero, he would be. So Dex started training. He read every superhero comic book he could find. He watched every hero movie ever made. He went to the library. That's a good place to start to get all those books he needs, right? At the library. Furiously, he studied, knowing everything depended on him. And see, they've made it kind of like a comic book too with these little sidebars explaining what's going on in the book. Dex figured that a hero must have strong muscles. He needed to exercise on lots of it. He started trotting to the corner and back every morning. He hopped over every crack in the sidewalk. <laughs> I love the look on his face. <laughs> He's working hard. He struggled to climb the garbage pile up and over and down, then up and over and down again. All day long he worked, day after day, even at bedtime, when he wanted to flop on the rug with his tongue hanging out, Dex forced himself to circle five extra times. You hear this comic book part again. The mighty Dex pressed on through wind and rain and storm and fatigue. <laughs> Look at him climb it up. Oh my goodness, I'm going to dog. When it got easier to run to the corner and back, Dex did it again and then again. Then he dragged a sock filled with sand as he ran, then two socks. When Clevis was bored and stood in the middle of the sidewalk to block his way, Dex dropped to the ground and slid right under him. He was too busy to be bothered by Clevis. There he is doing his exercises. He just slides right by Clevis. Dex was tired. He was sore. He was working so hard that he almost forgot what he was working for. 
But one night, as he dragged himself to bed after his last set of push-ups, Dex stopped in front of the mirror and flexed. He could feel them. He could see them. Muscles. <laughs> He's got all these little muscles, this dog. Faster than a rolling ball, stronger than the toughest rawhide, able to leap tall fences in a single bound. And there's the comic book part. Now Dex didn't take the stairs, he skimmed them. He leaped over hydrants, he vaulted up the curbs. He could jump over the garbage mountain without touching the top. He could run like the wind. He felt as if his legs had springs. So he's made the most of his muscles. One thing was missing. Finally, a small, bla uh, small brown package arrived. Dex ripped it open. His hero suit. It was red with a shiny green cape and it fit like a glove. Dex loved the way it fit. He loved the way it looked. He loved the feeling he had when he put it on. He was ready. Here's Dex, ready to be a superhero. With the courage of a lion, the strength of a bear, and the heart of a hero. When Dex went out in his suit for the very first time, he looked up the street and down. He noticed a young pup trying to cross the street. Dex sprang into action. <laughs> you see Dex here? Looks almost like he's flying. May I help you? He asked. He guided the wide-eyed pup across the street and grinned as the pup stared up at him with his mouth hanging open. The pup whispered, wow, it's Super Dog. Super Dog. Dex liked the sound of that. Oh, look at him helping. Of course, when Clevis saw Dex, he just had to comment. Hey, Dex, where's the party? And uh, when he saw him a few days later, Clevis called out, look, everybody, it must be Halloween. Anybody got a treat for Dex? Dex was so busy that he was able to ignore Clevis for the most part. The only time his face even got red was when Clevis yelled, where'd you get that dress up? Dex had to wonder if Clevis saw anything but the suit. Didn't he understand that the suit was just a way to let people know he was there to help? We're making fun of him in his little suit, but he's just there to help. The sun glinted off his emerald cape as Superdog raced to the rescue. He wears the suit so everyone knows he can help. There was a mouse he saved from the sewer, a purse snatcher he tackled. He fixed his neighbor's sprinkler. He found a lost kitten, pulled a rat away from a live wire, tracked down a lost wallet, put trash out, put out a trash fire, and organized the neighborhood cleanup. It seemed that now, whenever anyone needed help, they turned to Dex, and Dex had never been happier. Look at all those other animals he's saving. He's so helpful. Late one evening, there was a banging at the door. When Dex answered it, it seemed as if the whole neighborhood was yipping and yowling in panic. It's Clevis, they shouted. He's stuck in a tree, Dex. Hurry, hurry. Dex raised his eyebrows. It was not like Clevis to move enough to get in any trouble. In a flash, he was dressed and ready. It was clearly a desperate situation. And look at all the animals um, calling Dex for help and Dex is peeking out the door. But he's gotta put on his super suit, right? Here he is, there's Dex. As he got closer, Dex could see Clevis. He had been chasing a squirrel to the top of the tree, but had slipped and was hanging by one claw from a slender branch. He was yelling for all he was worth. You see Clevis up there? And look at all the spotlights are on him. All the people, all the other animals are putting spotlights on him. Oh no, I'm slipping, Clevis, Clevis screeched, help me. Dex looked desperately around for something to climb on. There were no boxes, no, or ladders, not even in trash cans. Then Dex looked at the crowd. What can he do? What can, what can Dex do to save Clevis? He's yowling, help me. Quick, everybody, Dex shouted, I've got an idea. Dex leaped onto the end of the teeter-totter, facing the tree, pushing it to the ground. Everybody on the other side. One, two, three. All the animals jumped together on the other end of the teeter-totter, catapulting Dex into the air. He soared over the crowd, his ears and cape streaming out behind him. The mighty Dex flew up into the dark and starry night. There he goes. <laughs> they were on the teeter-totter with him, and they all jumped, and it sent him flying up into the air. Dex scrambled onto the branch next to Clevis. Quickly, he pulled off his cape and tied its four corners onto the screeching cat. 
Jump, Dex shouted. Jump, Clevis. Did he make him a parachute? He made a parachute out of his cape. <clears throat> With an ear-piercing shriek, Clevis let go. The billowing cape caught the air and parachuted the big cat to the ground. Dex barked, backed up and slid to the ground amidst the cheers of the crowd. Super dog! Super dog! Super dog! Super dog! Dex was bruised and tired, but he forgot his discomfort as Clevis sheepishly lumbered over, still tangled in the green cape. What do you think Clevis is going to say to him? Thanks, Dex. You really are a hero. Look, there's Clevis getting parachuted down. Dex saved him. Dex didn't think he could feel any better, but he did just a little the next day when Clevis sidled up next to him and whispered, Say, Dex. Could I be your partner? Dex looked the big tomcat up and down. It would take a lot of work to turn Clevis into a hero. Dex could hardly wait. Sure, said Dex with a grin. Sure. With twice the brains and triple the brawn, our heroes forge on, ever ready to lend a helping paw. And there's Clevis now as the sidekick for Dex. And the two of them are going to be superheroes together. <laughs> It's a funny picture him leaping over the fire hydrants too. So yeah, that's one of my favorite little books about dachshunds. There's a lot of really great cute books about dachshunds, but this one's a really fun one. <clears throat> I have another cute little one. This one's a little shorter. It's called 10 Little Hot Dogs. And it's written and illustrated by John Himmelman. And this is a cute little county book. And it's published by Marshall Cavendish. Ten little hot dogs. Remember I told you, I think they tell you that they're called hot dogs sometimes, meter dogs, hot dogs. One little hot dog sitting on a chair. I want a friend to sit with me. Bark, bark. He's barking at his friend. Two little hot dogs sitting on a chair. <laughs> There's more room on the pillow. They're calling down to their friend. Three little hot dogs sitting on a chair. <clears throat> we want a bone to chew, drool, drool, drool. So they're going to bring a bone up with their friend. And now how many are there? Four little hot dogs wagging on a chair. They're wagging their little tails. They're very happy. All chewing on that bone. Let's play catch. Yep. Five little hot dogs playing on a chair that they brought up the ball. And there's one, two, three, four, five of them. Some are chewing on the bone. Some are playing catch. We want a sock to tug. Ruff, 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 ruff. There's a little friend coming out from under with a sock. Six little hot dogs bouncing on a chair. <laughs> They're bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> How about a shoe? Arf, arf. Arf, arf. Seven little hot dogs tumbling on a chair. We need a hat. <laughs> this one's got a hat. Woof, 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 woof. Eight little hot dogs jumping on a chair. <laughs> Can you count them with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one's got the boot stuck on his head. <laughs> okay, so. Don't forget the blanket. Yap, 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 yap. Nine little hot dogs scattered on a chair. They're still all playing so much. I bet they're getting tired. We need one more dog for the dog pile. Whew, we're tired. Yelp, 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 yelp. Ten little hot dogs all fast asleep. Shh. Are snoring just like that. <laughs> uh oh, I see one awake and he jumps down with his little sock. Nine little hot dogs still fast asleep. Shh, snuggle, 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 all snuggling up. Look now, he's woken this guy up. 
Eight little hot dogs still fast asleep. Shh, sigh, sigh. Ah, they're all sighing. Seven little hot dogs still fast asleep. Shh, they woke up another one. Snooze, 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 snooze. Six little hot dogs still fast asleep. Cuddle, 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 cuddle. Another one is waking up and jumping down. Five little hot dogs still fast asleep. Shh, nuzzle, 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 nuzzle. Look at the rest of them playing all wild. We're counting backwards now. Four little hot dogs still fast asleep. Shh, twitch, 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 twitch. And they woke up another one. <laughs> Three little hot dogs still fast asleep. Snuffle, snuffle, snuffle. Look at the ruckus going on on the floor. I don't even know how they sleep through it. We had three, we're taking away one, that's two. Two little hot dogs still fast asleep. Shh, snort, snort. One little hot dog still fast asleep. Zzz. The rest of them are all wild and playing, right? But what's gonna happen? All the little ones have been wild and playing while one was asleep. The one has to wake up at some point, but guess what? One little hot dog wide awake. Hey, you little hot dogs, wake up and play, he barks. Look, the rest of them are so tired they fell asleep again. <laughs> the one who was the last to get up is the first to want to play again. And then we would be back to the beginning of the story. Bark! Here's that cute little hot dog. <laughs> and I really love that story. Okay, so I want to tell you a story now about a dog, a pet dog named Bingo. And one day, my dog Bingo ran away. I'm going to draw Bingo for you so you can see him really well. You can see his, it's his head, his arms, his legs, and his tail. And I went to the park to try to find him. When I got to the park, uh-oh, I accidentally bumped into a hive of bees and they started buzzing all around me and I wanted to get away from those bees so I ran and I jumped in the lake. But I didn't really want to stay in the lake. It was quite cold and I needed to find Bingo. So I got out of the lake, tried to dry myself off a bit and I climbed up to top of a hill to look around and see if I could find Bingo. But instead what I saw was two doors with little doorknobs on them. So I went down the hill and knocked on the doors, but nobody answered. And I decided, well, I really do need to find Bingo. So I went back up to the top of the hill to look around and I thought I saw him down here. So I ran and ran and ran, but it wasn't him. And I realized I'd forgotten his leash that I brought with me. So I had to go back up to the top of the hill. And while I was up on the top of the hill, I went to the other side and I looked down and I thought I saw him again and I ran down. I heard him this time. I heard him barking, but I didn't hear him barking down there. I heard him barking back up here at the top of the hill. And guess what? There is where I found my dog, Bingo. And there is his picture. <laughs> and you could try this story and you could draw your own dog, however you like. You could give your dog pointy ears. You could maybe make the story go on a little longer and say that you um, you ran back to your house. And when you were run back to your house and you got his leash, you had to run up the stairs to your house. And then you ran back down the stairs to your house. And then you ran around your neighbor's yard and over and down to your other neighbor's yard and over to your next neighbor's yard. And then you ran back to the park. And you could give your dog a dachshund's body, a long, thin body, <laughs> with, a, with a little tail sticking up, if you wanted to add more to the story. It's really a fun story, and you can draw your dog however you like. And there's our story, bingo. There were some other really, really nice stories about um, dachshunds out there. I don't want to read all of them today because they're kind of long, but this one is really cute. It's called Sled Dog Dachshund, and it's about a little dachshund who wants to be a sled dog. He wants to pull the sleds. And this one's by Laura Atkins, so you might want to look for this one. Um, and then there's this other one. And it's kind of long, but it's really cute. And it's got this great picture that stretches on the front and back cover. And it's called Albert 
the dog who liked to ride in taxis. And it's about a dachshund who gets into a taxi by himself and rides around because that's what he wants to do. Um, and uh, all the adventures he gets up to. So those are two really nice books. And that one is by uh, Cynthia Zarin. And that is one that you could request also at the library um, if you want more books about dachshunds. Otherwise, please stick around and we are going to be stuffing our little pet dachshund and naming them. And then um, that'll be the end of our story time. All right. And now we come to the really fun part of our story time. We're going to make our own stuffed dachshund. And there he is. Cute long little dog. We're gonna take some stuffing from our kit. Oh, first let's make a wish. We all should have a star that came with our dog. And we're gonna make a wish and then we're gonna stuff that inside. So I'm not sure what should I wish for. I'm gonna wish for some really happy, healthy winter and holidays. I'm going to put that inside the little pouch that's on the side of my dog. And then I'm going to take some of this stuffing and I'm going to start stuffing it in there. And you can see that actually, I believe, let's see if we think how far down we can go. I think if you, if you squint your hand down in there, you can actually get some into the little leg too. And so we'll do the other little leg in the back. I think his tail is, yeah, the tail is already stuffed. So then we'll do some more of this. We will work it down into that leg back there. And then we're going to stuff some more. And I might have given you more stuffing than you need. And that's okay. We'll make it less stuffy or more stuffy if you'd like to. And we're going to keep on going because it's not done yet. I can feel it. It's a little belly's not done. And then let's see. Oh, these legs feel like they might be stuffed already. So that's good. So now... I'm thinking it looks it looks really nice. It's very fast to do, so you should take your time. You don't have to rush. And it looks really cute. And now I gotta get rid of this. So then I'm going to pull this. It makes like a zippy sound until it closes all the way. And then I can cut this extra off. Okay. And then we're gonna stuff all of that down inside. And then cut the off here show you how to do it. So you're going to stuff everything back inside. The little, the little bag part that's there on the side and the plastic tag. There's hardly any of that. Should be hardly any of that left. You're going to stuff it all inside and then you can see there's Velcro here. There's a rough part and a smooth part. And you're going to bring those together and then press it and seal it. And now you have your own little stuffed dachshund. And that should close up pretty nicely. And now we have to just name your dachshund and give it a uh, birth certificate. Oops, I'm gonna name mine Dex. So what I'll need to do is after this story time's over, I'm going to write Dex right here where it says name. I'm gonna put the date of birth, which is today's date, and I think your grown up could help you with that. And you write the date there. And then stuffed with love by, and you're gonna put your name here. And reads my new stuffed stuffable friend is very special because it was made with caring and loving hands i promise to give my new friend lots of love and happy hugs always and that's what you're going to promise your little new stuffed friend and it was made with caring hands it was made with your hands and those are special hands so i hope you enjoyed making your stuffed pet today and think of a name that you like and um That'll be your pet's name and think of a nice wish for yourself too. All right, I'll see you soon. Enjoy.